Yo, this is Christian. Today I want to tell you how I became a front-end developer without a degree. So, as you know, maybe you know, maybe you don't, I'm a self-taught developer and I got into this industry without having a degree, without having to go to a bootcamp, but I've done a lot of mistakes, okay? So I want to tell you um, what I've done and what was my mindset going through this whole process and maybe it's gonna help you as well. So stay until the end because I'm sure you'll get a lot of valuable lessons out of this okay so my mindset with this was that it's gonna take some time and it's a skill and if i have talent no one is gonna uh, beat me okay so i had a few reference experiences and that means i've learned other skills before like graphic design painting uh, music production and i knew i can learn anything okay so i had this confidence and i knew that programming is just another skill that i can learn and as i was going through this i've tried a bunch of resources i've tried linda i think right now it's called linkedin learning i've bought books i've bought uh, udemy courses i've bought other courses from other guys i was reading uh, medium posts i was watching youtube videos and i was trying all these things to see what works for me all right and i was going through this whole process and for the first three maybe six months I, I didn't even touch JavaScript because it was way too difficult for me and I wasn't sure if what I'm doing actually makes sense. So I stuck, I was stuck with CSS for a while and I was really, really good at it. And uh, one day I decided, okay, I have to give JavaScript a go, okay? So I started slowly and I think I was reading eloquent JavaScript. That was my main uh, resource for learning JavaScript and free code camp, if I remember correctly. So I was going through these two materials to this, uh, from between these two um, paths. And then I was always confused and frustrated because I wasn't sure exactly if what I'm doing is right or wrong. I wasn't sure if this is normal, right? And I was looking for confirmation from other people like you are probably doing right now. I was searching things like, can you become a developer if you are 21? Can you learn JavaScript if you've never been a programmer before? Can you land a developer job without a degree? So I was searching all this stuff like you are probably doing right now. Probably that's how you found this video. Just to get this confirmation because I didn't have someone to tell me, hey, this is normal, you know? Because sometimes we need a personal approach, right? Because Google has all the answers and I'm sure you have your favorite LinkedIn or Twitter influencer that tells you, hey, you can do it, it's totally possible, I've done it, right? But you need some sort of human confirmation and not just some cookie cutter uh, motivational post, okay? That's what was missing from me and this is kind of what I give to my students, you know, like, hey, you can do it based on what you're doing. You are a bit slow, but it's fine, you are consistent. And then I, uh, before I get into the next thing, I want to tell you that there are three types of developers that I've uh, encountered so far. And I actually talked about this uh, yesterday with my mentees in a, in a Zoom session. So there are three types, right? There is the um, consistent one, consistent, either slow or fast. So this person consistently shows up and improves, okay, consistently. For example, Jason, you saw him on the channel. He was consistent for those two months and he landed the job, right, really quick. Some others are consistent for eight months and you'll see a few more testimonials soon. And some others are consistent for a year and they get there, okay? So it doesn't matter how long it takes. The only thing that matters for this type of person or for this type of learner is the consistency. Then the other type is slow start, aggressive end, okay? So this type starts really, 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 really so slow uh, to the point where you are wondering what's happening, you know? And then at some point they, they explode, okay? So that's the second type. This one is always confusing me as well because I'm thinking in the beginning, hmm, can this person actually make it? And then after two, three months of coaching and uh, trying things to see what works for them and what doesn't, they actually go really, really fast, you know. And the third one, which is probably the most unfortunate one, is the one that starts aggressive, like really aggressive. They are really good. They are amazing, actually. And then they dip. When it comes for them to get a job, they dip. Okay, and I think I was a combination between, I think I was the consistent one, if that makes sense. And it took me maybe nine months to a year. I always forget this number. Everyone is asking me for how long have you been coding? I don't know, maybe four, five, six years. To this point, I, I even forgot about that. And it took me either nine months or one year. I don't remember exactly, but maybe one year. But I was consistent through this whole process, you know. And I had this 
idea in my mind that if I become really good, if I become talented, no one is going to stop me, okay? And I had this idea and I knew this is because it's just a skill, okay? If I want to become a musician, I need the skill and I need to have a following, I need to have some luck, I need the record label behind me. I know this because I wanted to become a musician before as well, okay? So I, I got that skill, but I did not have this, these other things going on for me, okay? Now with programming, it's easier because you only need the skill. So I knew that if I become good enough, it's gonna be pretty much impossible not to get hired, okay? So that was my mindset. And obviously I've done a bunch of things. I was stuck in tutorials, I was stuck with courses, I was stuck with all these things. And I was lucky because I had a snap moment and I transitioned from watching courses to actually building my own stuff. But some people are stuck in that phase for years, okay? And probably, if you are not one of them yet, you might become one of those persons. I would say 99% of people are there, okay? It's pretty much inevitable. It's like the yo-yo diet, right? You, um, you are losing weight for two weeks, then you gain it back, lose weight, gain, gain it back, lose weight, gain back. And then it, this cycle continues for, for years, right? I've been in this cycle myself and I decided, hey, I want to get a coach, a fitness coach, and that's going to help me to achieve my fitness goals. And probably you have experienced this as well, right? You've tried to lose weight and then you're like, oh, I'm, I'm too skinny now. I'm going to go back and get, get, get the weight back. And then you have this cycle, this vicious cycle forever. And this is what happens with code. And that's why there are so many armchair coders that know a bunch of theory, but have no idea how to put that theory into practice. Well, as I, um, what was the title of this video? Because I'm talking so much and uh, sometimes I forget. How I became a developer without a degree. That's the title, okay. As I was going through this process, I had one mentor that was working, that was a, a usual customer, a regular customer to the coffee shop that I was going to. And he was giving me advice. Hey, stop doing algorithms on code wars and start building projects. Stop doing algorithms on code wars and start building projects. And then as I was building uh, and as I started building these projects, I was making like quote generators and stuff like that. I was getting advice and feedback, you know, some encouragement from him. And um, slowly but surely, I have put the pieces together in my brain and I came up with a very mediocre portfolio that used to work years ago. I was making, I made a movie application and I think that's a very famous application for all bootcamp students. They are all making it, but I don't think that works anymore, right? or if it does you have to make it really really impressive so i put together this application and then i started applying for a bunch of jobs and guess what i got hired after i applied for my first uh, uh job i'm joking obviously not <laughs> the recruiters are calling me and uh they were not replying back they were rejecting me i only had one freaking interview one interview and i think it took six hours so I had to convert this React application to a React and Redux application. So I had to add a Redux store to it. I'm not sure if you are familiar with that, but that's what I teach in my course as well. I don't teach something that I don't do. So I converted this application, for this React application to React and Redux. And it took me six hours to do that, to implement the store, the actions, the reducers, all that good stuff. And then I thought I got the job, right? Wrong, <laughs> wrong, another slap. I did not get the job, but I had the recruiter's email and phone number and I had the, the CEO's phone number and guess what I did? I, I sat at home and I watched Netflix and ate ice cream. I called them. I called them like two, three times a day. I was messaging them. I was telling them, telling them hey, I'm going to work for you for free. Just give me this chance. Okay. And I knew that if I get in and I work one month, at least one month, in the worst case scenario, I'm gonna have one month of on my resume. In the best case scenario, they will hire me, okay? What happened in, in between the moment when I took the interview and I got a job was that another guy got hired, which had a lot more experience than me on paper, but he implemented a Redux store for each route in the application. And if you know anything about React and Redux, you'd know that's not how you do it and that's defeating the purpose of having a Redux store, okay? So that's what he did with two or three years of experience. And then they said, okay, let's give this guy a shot, okay? I went there, I worked there for a month and they liked me, I liked them. I was excited to learn about this. They had a crazy project and I hope 
I don't know if they're gonna see this video, but I hope they are successful. I think they are, I was checking their website the other day, it's still up, so I assume they are doing well. Um, I haven't talked to them in a while, but I hope from my heart that they are doing well because they are such smart guys, uh, they have such a great idea. And I was part of that in the beginning. I was, I took over the front-end project because the CTO at that moment was building the project, but he was more like a back-end kind of guy. So there was like a React and jQuery implementation, which is absolutely awful. But that's, that, that was the project that I took over and I converted that project to fully React and then React and Redux. It was difficult because I had no real world experience, okay? Uh, I had no mentor like I am to my students to give them like real world work. So it was difficult for me to get up and running, okay? But once I got over that phase, which took maybe two, three months, I became more confident and I started interviewing again. And then I was interviewing not with the idea of getting a new job, but just to get better at interviews, okay? And because I got really good at interviews, I got really confident, swearing in the interviews sometimes. I'm like, I am who I am, you know? On, on YouTube, I'm a bit more toned down because I have to keep this content safe, I guess. What's the, the word for that? But in the real world, I swear, I, I'm like, that's how I am, you know? I'm not gonna censor myself or anything. I say things how they are. And sometimes people don't like that, okay? So this is kind of, how I became a web developer without a degree. I'm reading the title from my Google Doc. It was a great experience. I would not change it if I would have the option to. Maybe I would improve a few things, but overall, I think I got lucky. I have to give some credit to that. And I was kind of blind throughout this process. Now, when I do it with my students, I'm trying as much as possible to uncover the blind spots so they can become better, faster, at their own pace. Now, if you are interested in that and if you want to become a web developer and do it properly and you want to be confident, okay, if you want to have a step-by-step -step plan that will get you from where you are right now, either from complete beginner or maybe you're in tutorial hell or maybe you finished a freaking bootcamp and the only thing you can do is a weather app if you are over there and you want to get to this point where people will actually pay you because you are good then what you have to do is you have to apply for a free consultation call there is a link somewhere in the description we're gonna have a quick chat on zoom and i'm gonna ask you a few questions right because i want to make sure that i can actually help you i'm gonna ask you a few questions then i'm gonna show you exactly what you have to do based on your individual situation and then you can decide if you want to become part of my program or if you want to go on your own way and do it by yourself and take a few years of frustration and desperation okay so that's pretty much it leave this video a like if you liked it subscribe hit the notification bell and i'll see you in the next one cheers